morning. We thank the Lord for another day. We come to before him so that we can continue with our series on spiritual growth. And our topic for this week is Christian living. And we shall continue from where Reverend Josephine left yesterday, uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2, and we shall continue with chapter 3. My name is Judson Joroge, and my sign language interpreter is Abigail Mwikamba. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we give you thanks and praise for giving us a new day. As we begin this day, Lord, we pray that you continue to minister to us, continue to strengthen us, and continue to guide us. As we learn from your word, may you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So from what Reverend Josephine shared with us, we saw that Christ is supreme. And if he's in our hearts then, we need to reject the false teachings and to be built up and established in our faith in Christ. For the next three days, we shall continue with this journey and we shall be discussing chapter three and chapter four. The main focus will be looking at practical ways of Christian living as we grow spiritually. Today we shall consider Christian conduct, tomorrow Christian relationships, and on Saturday Christian service. We begin with Christian conduct, which we'll see in chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. For these three days I request you that, that you read the book of Colossians, and especially chapter 3 and 4, as we shall just be referring to the uh, verses. In most of his writings, Paul always begins by establishing spiritual concepts and ideas, and then moves to applying them. In chapter 1 and 2, he set the stage by showing the things that we learned from Reverend Josephine, the supremacy of Christ and how we are expected to grow up spiritually by being established in the faith. And from there he transitions into practical matters that whatever you have learned, now you can put it into practice. And that is why in chapter three, he begins in NIV version saying, since then you have been raised with Christ. It means there is something he had taught before and now you need to put that into practice. And that is what we shall look at. So being in Christ means then that we need to do three things according to this passage. Number one is to reset our minds or to have a new mindset. Number two is to have a new standard, set a new standard. And three is to acquire a new status or a new self. Verse one begins by saying, since then we have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse two, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Now that we have been raised with Christ, we need to change or reset our hearts and our minds on the things above where Christ is seated. And we sh that, that should be a change from the worldly mindset. Where we came from, now we have a new set of mind. We must make a, a conscious decision about the way we think, about the way we do things, it says, give careful consideration to this. 
Christians should always give attention to godly, spiritual ideas and thoughts rather than the sinful ones that they used to live in. We can't live and think and act the same way we did before we came to know Christ. In Romans chapter 2, and uh, chapter 12 and verse 2, we are told, set your minds, transform your minds. My, your minds should be transformed in Christ. You are, we are called not to become so adjusted to our culture that we fit into it without even thinking. Instead, we should fix our attention on God and we will be changed from inside out. That is what it means to have a new mindset. So when you are in Christ, when you are raised with Christ, you are expected to set your minds on things above and not on worldly things. The second thing we find in verse 5 to 11, setting a new standard. Paul says, set, uh, put to death therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, rust, and all those things, because they bring God's wrath. And in verse eight, he says, but you must also rid yourselves of all such things as anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language. Setting of our, mind, of our minds and hearts on things above where Christ is means that we also need to set a new standard. We used to live in a different standard, different set of, of life when we were not in Christ. And we are called to put to death. These things which you are called to put to death are the sins that or behaviors that come out of our bodily desires. And these are sexual desires. And putting to death means that you are completely living out those things. In other passage, Paul says, you should not even think about them. They should not be even mentioned amongst you. And therefore, we are called to deny these things and consider them death to us, dead to us, and, to, and us dead to them. These are fornication, uncleanliness, passion, and evil desires, which are, as I said, refer to sexual sins. This, we need to modify something we must initiate ourselves. It is not something that we pray that God may remove from us. It is us to initiate in our lives. We have to carry out an exercise of leaving out those things and putting them to death completely. Today, in our world, we are, we are, we are faced with things like uh, sexual immorality, incense, teenage pregnancies, domestic violence, all these things should not be even mentioned among Christians because already they have been raised with Christ. Then he says we must rid ourselves of those sins which come out of our mouths. These are things that are driven by anger. And he says, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language, and also, in, later he adds, lying. We should not lie to each other. Jesus, of course, would not walk in any of these things. And so, if we identify with him, we should not walk in them either. We must practice truthfulness in contrast to anger, slander, abusive speech. And that is our challenge, to put off, to get rid of the old nature and clothe ourselves with the new nature, which is the next uh, point, that 
we need to acquire a new self and a new status, a new nature. Because already we have changed our mindset. My, our mind has been transformed. And now we have again put to death those things that are of the worldly nature. And now we are called to put on the things that are of heavenly nature. And that is verse 12 to verse 17. And here, he again starts the passage with, since then you are God's chosen, you are holy, you are beloved people, you should acquire this new status by clothing yourself with Christian values. You don't put to death, you don't uh, uh, unclothe the bad things and remain undressed. You have to dress yourself. You have to clothe yourself with character of Christ. When you take off the old self, then you must acquire the new self. These Christian values that he mentions here are compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And each of these qualities expresses themselves in relationships. A significant measure of our Christian life is found simply in how we treat people and the quality of our relationships with them. The new self calls us for forgiveness. We must follow the example of Christ. As Christ forgave, be forgiving. And above all these virtues, he says we need to have love, put on love which perfectly fulfills what God requires of us in any kind of relationship or fellowship. And as we do all these things, then we must do it as unto the Lord. Our nature will have changed, our attitude will have changed, our mindset will have been changed, our standards will have been set, and a new nature acquired, and therefore whatever we do, we must do it as unto the Lord, with all our hearts and with all our minds. And this will be our way of life as Christians. Today I want to give you an assignment. And in Bible study, we must have assignments. And today my assignment for you is the last verses we have read that we should forgive as Christ forgave. Is there anyone in your life that you find hard to forgive? Ask God to help you to reach out to these people and ask them or tell them that you have forgiven them. Just as Christ forgave, you should forgive. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the new life that we have acquired in Christ Jesus. Thank you that we can live in the light with peace and love and harmony with each other. Thank you for the joy we have in this new life and the integrity to which you call us to live in Christ Jesus. We pray that you help us to have a new mindset to set a new standard and to acquire a new nature by clothing ourselves with Christian godly virtues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.